building. Hi everyone, I'm Daniel Parent and I teach 3D art and sculpture. And today I have a challenge for you. Um, actually, I have three challenges for you because uh, I've created a contest. Um, and hopefully we'll uh, enjoy doing some sculpture stuff together. Um, so I chose these three challenges based on the access to materials that we have. We don't have the amazing studio we have at Brentwood. Uh, so we kind of have to make do with what we've got. Um, which means we're gonna to have to be flexible about maybe what we consider to be 3D art. Uh, luckily, um, the 3D art world is extremely flexible. Uh, and that's largely thanks to Marcel Duchamp. Um, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about him because it gives some justification to what we're doing uh, with these challenges. So I'm gonna share my screen with you really quickly and just tell you about Marcel Duchamp. Bear with me for just a moment. All right. Just wait on this to load. We'll be ready to go in a second. All right, so this is Marcel Duchamp. Um, he was making art just after the First World War. Uh, at that time, the art world was largely controlled by um, salons or uh, galleries that would control um, basically an artist's access to um, a market. And at the time, they were very, very strict. So you would submit your work and if they liked it, they would show your work and you would have access to an audience and you could build a name for yourself. And if not, they would stamp the back of your work with a big red stamp saying rejected and they'd send it back to you. Um, so artists were getting frustrated with this because uh, they had no access to a market really. And some of them were starting to create their own exhibitions. And at the time, Marcel Duchamp was on the committee of one particular uh, salon. And they claimed that they were going to allow any artist who submitted a work to show their work. So they would reject nothing. So Duchamp at the time created a sculpture called Fountain. He took a urinal and turned it on its side and he signed it with a pseudonym, a fake name, R. Mutt, and dated it 1917. So he submitted this to the committee that he was a member of uh, under this fake name. So no one would know it was him. And when they saw it, they immediately rejected it and wouldn't let it into the show. So he resigned because he wanted to make this to point out that they were being hypocrites. Um, they weren't opening the art world up to the artist. They were just changing who decides what is art. So in his view, art was created by artists and artists decide what is art. Um, this work had a great impact on art, giving art back to the artists. And it, um, it allowed artists to have more control over the art industry. Um, he also believed that art can be made by anyone and it, it doesn't require uh, amazing art education or background. Uh, Marcel Duchamp later went on to become possibly the most influential artist of the 20th century because of works like this. And it really changed the view of what is art. So keep that in mind as I announce our three challenges. 
So this first challenge I chose based on easy access to materials. And the challenge is this, create the best pancake. Um, the term best is probably problematic for some people. And I'll explain that in a moment, but I'm gonna tell you about challenge number two. And challenge number two is kind of an ode to kinetic art. Um, this is probably the, the hardest to tie to 3D art or sculpture, but um, if you're creative, you probably can make this a work of art. And that is to create the best trick shot. And again, word best needs a bit of clarification. But uh, challenge number three is um, one, requires some safety caveats. Number one being uh, you cannot hurt anything that is alive. Uh, two, you cannot destroy anything that does not belong to you. And three, this in no way needs to be dangerous. You must exercise all caution that you can never put someone in the position to be harmed. So that being said, challenge number three is to destroy something. The most beautiful destruction wins. So what I'd like you to do is create a short video under 60 seconds showing your response to one of these challenges. Um, I, I said things like best and most beautiful. These are incredibly subjective. So um, you're going to be judged by a panel of judges, uh, all art teachers from the school, including Ms. Weidenmeyer, Mr. Luna, uh, Ms. Elms, and myself. And the things we're going to be looking for are things like creativity, um, inventiveness, uh, attention to detail, all those things that you probably know that your art teachers uh, enjoy in your work. Um, why don't we take a look at a video I created? Um, I made this video in response to the Create a Best Pancake uh, challenge. And I believe uh, Mark is going to cue that up for us right now, if we can. Let's take a look at that. So uh, that's an example of one way someone might tackle the create the best pancake. But what does best really mean, right? So is it best drawing using pancake batter? Is it best presentation on the plate? Is it best editing in the video? It's up to you, really. So I, I don't want to uh, punish people for being creative and thinking outside the box. So bending the rules to fit your idea is probably a good idea. Um, to submit your work, I have created a Google Classroom just for this contest. Um, I will share that with you right now, actually. One moment, bear with me for a second again. So here's our Google Classroom code. Um, I will be posting all the information on my school so that you have access to this later so you don't have to remember this code or jot it down in a scramble right now. Um, it will be available for you along with contest details. Also, on Google Classroom, you will find, again, 
those contest details in full. So I'm going to jump back to the screen again. So you will submit your videos via that Google Classroom. Um, the due date for submissions will be the 1st of May. That's the Friday after next Friday. Um, winners will be announced and videos shown during the following assembly after contest wrap up. Um, probably missing something that you want to know about. So let's jump into question time, perhaps. We've got questions already in the Q&A. Do you have to submit a video? Yes, you do. On Google Classroom, that was probably asked just before I clarify that. Can I repeat the challenges? Most certainly. Um, challenge one, create the best pancake. Challenge two, uh, create the best trick shot. And challenge three is to destroy something. Uh, most beautiful destruction wins. The classroom code will be posted on um, my school so that you can look it up. You don't have to remember it now. But uh, I will share that as well. And it is HJMB. 2S something 3. So you'll find that on the answered section now. Do we only need to submit uh, one out of three videos or you, do you have to do all three? You do not have to do all three. I would be happy if you submitted a video for each. That would be totally fine, but I in no way expect that you do that. One is more than enough. Can you su submit multiple videos? Of course, that would be awesome. I'd love to see more people participating. Actually, something I did fail to mention is that uh, this contest is totally open to anyone within the Brentwood community. So if uh, you involve your family, anyone at your residence, I'd be happy to. And there we go, same question asked and answered. Um, yeah, I'd be happy to have a submission from anyone within the Brentwood community. So try and, try and get people to participate. Is there a prize? Unfortunately, it's difficult to hand out a prize at the moment, but um, the winning video will be shown during the following assembly after contest wrap up. Is it mandatory to enter the contest? No, not really. Um, we've got this half hour right now, and that's all I can really take of your time. But if you would like to participate, that would be fantastic. If not, uh, I know you guys are super, super busy with your academics. So, you know, that's all right. I think we've answered all questions in the Q&A. Um, I am available for questions anytime this afternoon as well. Um, email is probably the, the easiest way to reach me. Uh, my email will be posted on um, my school as well, but it follows the Brentwood format. So it's daniel.parent at Brentwood bc.ca. And if we don't have any further questions, thank you very much for coming and participating as much as you have. I appreciate your time and I really look forward to seeing any work that you create. So go and be creative. So we have a hand up. Can we Can we address anyone who's raised a hand live? Is that something we can do right now? Yeah, you can. Sorry, I think they actually left. Um, oh. uh, but uh, I, I, I want to say they probably had a question and then they found the Q&A and answered it there. Um, Fair enough. Is there any other questions or anything? Oh, a lot of thank yous.
Well, I'm glad to see people are excited to do this. That's great.